Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own grids from scratch without having to use any specialized tools. We're going to just use what's within Photoshop to uh, make your own grids. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off by making a brand new layer. And what I'd like to do here is I want to also now make a new document. And this is going to be similar to making a brush in one of my previous videos and I'll have a link to that in the description but we're gonna make a 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel canvas with a transparent background very important and we're gonna use this uh, document here to create a grid now to make a perfectly straight line in Photoshop you wanna hold down the shift key while making your line and what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat this process. You can keep them as close to evenly spaced as you like. I'm not going to be too precious with it. Something that resembles a square here. And what I'll do now is I'll duplicate that and I'll hit the transform tool just so that we have our grid. So this is the grid that we're going to be working with and I'm just going to trim off the extra bits. First I'm going to merge these two layers by hitting Command E and then I'll use my uh, rectangular marquee tool to make selections and I'm just going to cut and clean it up. Okay so this is going to be the basis for my grid brush. So the next step that I need to do now is to make this as a brush preset. I'm going to edit define brush preset and I'll just give this a name. I like to use initials here just to kind of separate my brushes from the other brushes that Photoshop already has. I'll just call this Grid Basic. And I'll click OK. Now if I go back to my untitled document, you can see that when I... Um, I'll have to click the mouse for this as opposed to using my pressure sensitive stylus. But if I click, you'll see that that grid pops up. And let's just cl click it twice. And it's okay if there's a little bit of separation. I'll just try to move it a little bit closer. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this grid and we're going to do some really cool things with it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate it. I'll have one area for a curved ceiling. I'll have another area for an opening. And I'm going to duplicate this again and have one for the ground. So I've got three layers. In fact, let me label those layers here. So this is going to be our ceiling layer. This is going to be our ground. If I don't label my layers, it can get very confusing. And this is going to be the opening. Okay, so if we go to the ceiling layer now, what we can do is we can hit Command T. That brings up the Transform tool. And then we can go to Warp. And when you use Transform Warp, you'll see a set of dots around the object. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to Grid, and we're going to make that a 5x5 five five grid. That's just going to give us more vertices that we can use for our warp. And then to the right of that, there is actually a warp pull-down menu. We're going to choose Arc. And you can see that this arc now appears to be rounded. Uh, for the ground, what I'll do is I'm going to use the transform tool and I'm going to use perspective to go ahead and create my floor. And the opening, of course, I'll just scale this guy up, move it into position, and I have, um, I can just trim out some of the extra bits that I don't need. And now I've got my front. Now, it's okay that these don't totally match up. I'm not really worried about that. In fact, you shouldn't worry about that either. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create another grid. So I'm going to go back to my grid brush. This is on a brand new layer. And I'll just go ahead and use my mouse. Not my stylus, my mouse. And what I'll do is I'll make a side wall here. So what I can do is I can first of all scale this guy up. Then use my perspective tool to create a side wall. And if you want to make that more precise, you can right click and choose distort 
to gently nudge the shape. nudge it a little bit up here at the top. There we go. And now what I can do is take this layer, I'll just call this right wall, and I will go ahead and duplicate it by hitting Command J. I'll label this duplicate as left wall, and I'll move it over, and I want to transform, flip it horizontally. So now I've got basically something similar to what I had before. Let me just use my distort tool to make some refinements to that shape. And now I have something that I can use as the basis for my drawing. So maybe at some later point I want to go ahead and alter these uh, grids. So what I want to do is I want to preserve everything I currently have. Let's take everything that I have and then merge it together into a group. So if I hit Command G, that puts the grids into a group. And then I'll make a new layer above that. Uh, the reason being is I want to be able to draw on top of these grids. So now I can go ahead and drop the opacity of the grid layer by just uh, choosing, say, 50% or 30%, something like that. And now I can go ahead and use a regular old brush. I'll use my scratch board tool, which uh, I have a video on how to make your own custom ink brush. You can watch that. And what I'll do now is I'll just go back through and I'll draw the shape. So let's create an opening. And I find that it's easier for me to rotate the canvas when I'm trying to make an arc-like shape. can use these guidelines and I can pick the ones that I want. Go ahead and create the structure for the top part. In fact, what I can do is I can say, all right, well, this is going to be a light. And again, these are just going to be part of my rough drawings. I'll bring this down. extend this out and I'm drawing these lines straight by freehanding them and I'm using my entire arm as I pull and you can see I'm sometimes hitting command Z because it's not exactly perfect but rotating the canvas and pulling the line towards you will make a big difference in your line quality if you try to draw a line as if you're moving away from the object it'll be much more difficult so let's go ahead and put a few more landmarks here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll create some kind of a jigsaw, like a sci-fi type of wall. And for those vertical lines, I am holding down the shift key. And for down here, these lines. Again, I'm pulling the lines towards myself. Makes it much easier. I could also just hold down my shift key. And since I'm drawing these grids, these grids are getting progressively wider as they're getting closer to the viewer. And I'll repeat this intricate pattern on the opposite side. So now I've got some kind of an interesting looking structure that I can work with. So I've used the warp tool and I've used a grid brush to go ahead and create this interesting opening. And then from here, what I can do is I can always refine the object if I turn off my grid or even if I, if I keep my grid on and I want to say um, add some shading. Let's just go ahead and do that really quick. I want to add some um, lines. I'm going to just increase the size of my brush here and just basically feather that in. 
You can increase the size of your brush by holding down the right bracket key with the brush tool activated. And I apologize, I'm going a little bit fast here. And then I can flood this area in. It's going to leave a few little openings just to keep it interesting. here to kind of indicate that the metal might be a little bit worn. I'll throw in some rivets. You should always think about texture. I'm trying to invoke texture through just your line weight and your line work. So I've got this opening here. Um, let's see. I can bring back my grid if I want to add other objects. Let's just say that I have some kind of a, I don't know, canteen or some kind of a little receptacle. I'm following the lines that I've already established with my grid. I'm not drawing against those. And I might have a little bit of a tangent here. You see how this line follows through on my uh, little box? I'm just going to move that box up to avoid that tangent. Ta tangents tend to flatten out a space. And then maybe over here, just to kind of keep things more interesting, I'll just draw some rocky terrains. Maybe this is overlooking some kind of a uh, unusual alien terrain. There's all sorts of rocks. And we have a mountain, some kind of a moon. And really controlling that pressure sensitivity is, is a good habit to get into. You can adjust the pressure sensitivity with the tablet driver settings. You can also adjust it by how hard or how soft you press. So now that I've got everything in place here, I can go through and I can finish this guy up. So that's how I created this particular piece right here. I just used the warp tool and um, used a grid brush to create the entire thing. So this is just giving you a basic idea of how I approach that. So if you found this video to be useful, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. If you have any feedback or questions or comments about this video, Maybe uh, you can share whether or not the techniques work for you in the comments. Uh, I would definitely read every single comment that you guys post. Um, and uh, tell a friend about this channel as well. I would greatly appreciate some word of mouth uh, publicity. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.